Hotfix 2.5.0.2 has come and the Crucible is certainly a different place. Hand cannons have had their initial accuracy returned to year one values, so your initial shot and some of the follow-up ones will be pinpoint accurate. To compensate though, they increase their fall-off damage and the range that fall-off damage occurs at. For example, before the hotfix, here is where the damage fall-off would start on the vendor palindrome. And after the patch, here is where it starts. In the past, this would have been a huge nerf, but coupled with the accuracy buff, hand cannons feel extremely similar to year one in overall consistency. Yes, bloom still exists, and your shots will become less accurate the faster you fire your weapon without letting it settle, but properly pacing your shots is actually rewarded now. So the most common question since this patch has gone live has been, is my favorite exotic hand cannon good? My usually means the person asking the question, by the way. And to put it shortly, yeah, all the exotic hand cannons are viable in PvP. You can turn the video off now. Alright, for a more in-depth explanation and a tier list, let's start out with the hand cannon that I consider to be at the very bottom of the list. First Curse. Yeah, you heard it right. First Curse is at the bottom of the list, at least of the five exotic hand cannons that are out there right now. It's kind of odd, because before the patch, I was absolutely tearing it up in the Crucible. It was absolutely one of my favorite weapons out there, since it rewarded a skilled hand with high damage and reloading instantly on the first headshot kill. Nothing about the weapon was really changed aside from the global changes to hand cannons, though. The reason you could actually be successful with First Curse pre-patch was due to the heavy use of special ammo. You could destroy someone as they rushed you with a shotgun, with three well-paced shots. You could quickly swap from your special and finish off someone as well due to quick draw, but the special ammo change coupled with how prevalent palindrome type hand cannons are now, the first curse and its entire archetype just feels a little bit too slow. Yeah, you will still be successful with it, but you're working with a suboptimal tool in my opinion. Since it kills in the same number of headshots and body shots as the medium rate of fire hand cannons, I can't really seem to find much of a reason to use any hand cannon in this, the slowest rate of fire archetype. The only real benefit of the first curse is that when its signature perk is active from a headshot kill, you have the highest base range of any hand cannon. Look here, I was doing 85 damage in this kill, and then the first curse procced from the headshot kill. The next headshot did 95 damage. You'll be able to carry out that hard hitting damage further with the perk active, but in most cases that doesn't allow you to kill faster. The high equip speed with quick draw is also something worth noting in this mostly primary meta. The next hand cannon at the number 4 spot is the Hunter exclusive Ace of Spades. I'm probably going to get a bit of flack for placing this close to the bottom, but hear me out here. There are two main reasons that this isn't rated higher. First are the middle column perks. It has reinforced barrel instead of rifled barrel. The reduction in stability, while not huge, makes it difficult to take advantage of the maximum rate of fire of the gun. The recoil just kicks a little bit too much in my opinion for a weapon in that archetype. It would be cool if that was changed to rifle barrel, then you would have an interesting choice between a solid stability bump without range from perfect balance, or keeping the stability and losing some reload for a range increase from rifled barrel. I ended up settling on using perfect balance so I could land my shots a little bit quicker in the closer range maps. The other major gripe with Ace of Spades is the twirly animation. I know, it looks amazing and it adds personality to the weapon. It was Cade 6's gun after all. But when you swap to the gun and immediately bring it up to your sights, you can't actually fire it until that animation goes through its full time in the background. It's weird, but there's just a huge delay on shooting even if you don't see the animation from swapping sometimes. It's pretty frustrating when you're trying to get one last shot on someone or prime them for a throwing knife headshot and your trigger pulls just don't do anything. It will get you killed eventually. Fortunately, there are some good pluses to the weapon. The recoil is a very predictable straight up and down, much like the Imago loop. In fact, the guns share very similar base stats. It also has third eye, so you'll have some extra awareness when sighting in on a choke point. Even though this gun is fourth on the list, it doesn't mean it's bad or that you shouldn't use it. It's still a very much usable weapon in the current Crucible meta since it's in the medium rate of fire archetype. At number three on the list, we have Thorn. Pre-patch, the barrage of nerfs it received, culminating in the removal of a large portion of its range, made the gun too inconsistent to use in any serious PvP setting. Well, fortunately, its initial accuracy is now high enough that you can use it. I still highly recommend using Send It over Perfect Balance since the gun just needs 
the range. Range fall off starts way too soon if you don't have it on there. I also ended up finding the most consistency with using accurized ballistics. When I was using field choke, I just found a lot of my follow up shots missing. Maybe my aim was crap, but there was an immediate difference when I swapped to accurized. Also, keep your feet on the ground with this gun. Even though hand cannons have stellar inner accuracy, Thorn just wouldn't work for me when I was jumping around. But as soon as I started shooting like a completely normal person, my shots landed every time. I'll probably just attribute this to me not being 100% used to Thorn's recoil. Even though the damage over time has been nerfed heavily from its initial state, you will still get plenty of kills and trades with it. The final round bonus damage can also come in pretty handy when facing with multiple opponents. It doesn't come into play often since you should be reloading constantly with hand cannons, but when that situation presents itself, then you will be glad you have a bonus damage round on command. Also, you will be seeing a lot of use on the over-penetrating rounds in some of the closer range maps. The number two weapon on the list is Last Word. Despite its bonus damage being removed, it's still plenty lethal, mostly because it's a full auto hand cannon. The initial accuracy buffs to hand cannons just made Last Word's initial burst so consistent. It's still absolutely a close range weapon, but the range fall off made it so it's only a close range weapon. I was hitting people across the map for 17, and that wasn't even consistently hitting them. The only thing that got hurt about Last Word with this hotfix patch was how you use it with your loadout. It used to be a perfect complement to any sniper, but now that special ammo as a whole is kind of limited, you're stuck with a closer range weapon which doesn't give you much variety in your engagements. In addition, sidearms are by and far the most used secondary. Sidearms also completely wreck Last Word and are a little bit easier to use, so Last Word has a lot working against it. That being said, if you were proficient with it before, you will still wreck face. Finally, the weapon that takes the number one spot on the tier list is Hawkmoon. Yes, the king is back. Hawkmoon's main problem was just overall inconsistencies, whether it be the first shot or the last. It's a recurring theme here, but since hand cannons are overall more consistent in their shots now, Hawkmoon just destroys people. I found that running aggressive ballistics was the best ballistic option to use since it made the recoil more predictable. Even though you lose range and stability from it, it's still easier to control than the jarring accurize and field choke options. Also, even though the range stat is lower, the damage bump from aggressive makes up for it in normal ranges. The 13 round magazine plus medium rate of fire R-type plus three bonus damage rounds just makes for a wonderful shooting experience. It isn't quite like it was in year one, but this is as close as it has been in a very long time. And that's it for the tier list. It's really nice to see Hawkmoon being very usable again. The other hand cannons on the list are all pretty close together, so if you think something should be higher than it is, that's fine. It should also be noted that while all of these hand cannons are good and usable, I truly think that a well-rolled A as Luna or a Vendor Palindrome is just going to be better. You will have better range, aim assist, and it doesn't take up an exotic slot. These exotics definitely have some wonderful utility and flavor, but at the end of the day, if you're looking to get the most out of your hand cannon, you need to be looking for something with the most consistency, and legendary hand cannons tend to have the stats that bring that to the table, instead of trade-offs for edge case utility. So, how are you finding hand cannons play with the current hotfix patch? Did my tier list get everything wrong? Let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.